Welcome to the DWS Market Outlook. Publishing a medium-term outlook in the midst of turbulent times is challenging. Market slums can develop their own dynamics, especially when banks are at their center. But our focus is on how the market could look in a year's time, and we try to avoid overestimating the lasting significance of current events. And what is happening now is more or less in line with the historical script. Every major hiking cycle from central banks has claimed victims in the financial system and ultimately such consequences are needed. Both the ECB and the Federal Reserve have raised interest rates at a very fast pace. But it has taken time for this to be reflected in financing conditions. The recent bank failures are likely to change that. We expect a slowdown in lending and thus cooling of the economy, which should bring weaker inflation. It is quite possible that the current turbulence will be seen as a cleansing thunderstorm in a few quarters' time. Thunderstorms, it is true, can also do lasting damage. But we think that the systemic risks are much lower today than during the financial crisis. We do not expect a bad investment year, but not a particularly good one either. Volatility will likely remain with us for the time being. Interest rate and inflation developments, which remain difficult to predict near term, will contribute to this. Central banks continue to struggle with an overly strong labor market and stubbornly high core inflation. At the same time, economic data are rather weak and monetary policy measures often only take effect with a lag of several quarters. In our core scenario, we expect weak to slightly negative economic growth in Europe and the US over the next 12 months. We expect only a moderate upswing afterwards, even though we expect China to grow by more than 5% this year as it reopens. Peak inflation is probably behind us, with the exception of European core inflation. And core inflation is also likely to decline more slowly than hoped in the US. The central banks will do everything to avoid a resurgence of inflation. So far, we assume that the ECB would be prepared to raise rates to 4% and the Fed to 5%. Whether this will be necessary, however, also depends on whether there are clear signs of an economic slowdown beforehand. In the first three months of this year, we have seen how quickly investors can change their minds on interest rates and on inflation. For the rest of the year, too, we expect markets to swing from data point to data point. Over the next 12 months, we expect government bonds to be volatile and trade sideways, albeit with yields rising slightly. As we do not expect a pronounced recession in either Europe or the US, we prefer short-term government bonds. Corporate bonds now offer a significantly higher yield than last year. In our view, they can also serve as a buffer against further market turbulence. The generally good balance sheet of many companies also help corporate bonds. At the same time, we do not underestimate the risks that market turbulence and potential recessions might expose weaknesses. This could also apply to many companies and sovereigns from emerging markets, though they at present look financially sound. We think they should perform relatively better than industrialized countries compared to last year. We expect the dollar to weaken against the euro and the yen. Again, looking at the next 12 months, we see some small upside potential for global equities. But returns will likely be largely fed by dividend payments as we do not expect earnings growth or rising valuation. In fact, 
our view on equities can be summed up by one thing. Since June 2022, our forecast for the S&P 500 has remained virtually unchanged at just over 4,100 points. For quite some time, we have seen little upside. At the same time, however, we have adjusted Asia and Europe upward. Two trends are behind this. First, we see hardly any potential for improved margins, especially in the States. Second, the valuation of American equities have so far outstripped those in the rest of the world that we expect this to level out. In addition, it's time for a brother in the technology sector, for which we expect another challenging year. In the medium term, however, this remains the area with the greatest growth potential. Artificial intelligence could provide the next big impetus. We do not expect any one investment style or trend to dominate the equity markets over the next 12 months. This suggests that broader positioning and a focus on fundamentals is important. We believe that for the time being, shares of highly leveraged companies will be avoided. For the current year, our favorites are European small caps, Asian beneficiaries of China's reopening and the telecommunications sector. Bank failures, geopolitical tension, continued high inflation and broadly stable real interest rates. These sound like good conditions for gold, which we view positively as an individual investment, but especially in a portfolio context. Infrastructure assets and real estate are competing with bonds in terms of regular payouts and might have to deal with tighter refinancing conditions. But they can beat bonds in one respect, dealing with inflation. We therefore favor infrastructure assets that are able to pass on price increases to clients. Thematically, we especially like projects that help reduce energy consumption or make it more sustainable. In real estate, we continue to like select logistic projects and modern residential developments in attractive cities. We remain cautious on the office segment. Finally, the oil price, which we see at $100 a barrel for Brent on a 12 months view. This may come as a surprise given our moderate global growth outlook. But the supply side remains tight due to underinvestment in recent years and Chinese demand should increase. 